hello and welcome to the show. We are here at the Baharama circuit with three more vehicles to be, well, destroyed. Starting with a Bolide. Now, we have had a couple of specs of this car go around before. A, well, stripped down chassis. It did quite well until the chassis got bent and it sort of stuck spinning around on the circle. It didn't make it onto a second lap, but up until the point the chassis got bent was actually looking quite impressive. And the normal version, again, did quite well for a classic supercar until a wheel fell off, which isn't particularly helpful. So this rally spec, I'm thinking might, might possibly be able to survive, unlike with the, the chassis, of course. This will take a little bit of punishment before it starts bending up, or like the stripped down chassis, we should say. Uh, it should take a little bit of punishment before it gets to the point where it manages to beach itself on its own buckled chassis. And I'm hoping the suspension, uh, you know, a little bit more compliant, should be able to deal with bumps that little bit better, and uh, so on and so forth. So we might get a decent amount of survivability out of the car. There is also plenty of speed on offer, which is always nice. In fact, first gear is kind of the gear I want to be in for all of this. Oh, it is, I think, still rear-wheel drive, which... Uh, slightly less than ideal in the car however it is it is what it is it is actually got quite a lot of grip and is driving quite nicely so can't complain about that too much we are across these opening jumps very very nicely indeed the thing is while yeah we can get across these no problem once we start taking damage which is going to happen at some point sooner probably rather than later quite frankly Oh, we're across Radiator Springs. Actually, across Radiator Springs very, very nicely. Yeah, it will it will survive for now. It's when we start taking damage, that is when we're going to have problems. I don't know how long it's going to, uh, to survive on that front. The engine, of course, being in the middle is uh, quite good for survivability uh, because... Oh, crap. <laughs> You've got to be careful. This is another one that is very fast, and you can easily see yourself just plummeting straight off of the course if you're not careful. Oh, we, no, we're not going to be able to do that. Okay. Oh, it's not good. Not good. The front left wheel's gone. <laughs> oh, it's got very, very weak. Very weak wheels. That's almost ETK-esque. It was going so well up until that point. It's almost like, provided everything is spot on, the suspension is good, but as soon as you ask it to load it that little bit too much or it gets loaded in slightly a, a wonky angle, that's it. That's it, that's you in a lot of trouble. Oh, we're going to go for a roll. Don't snap the other wheel off, please. We can, amazingly, got a lot of drivability with this thing, and uh, only on three wheels. It's probably one of the best driving cars I've had on three wheels. We've had a few in this series that have ended up, I say limping around with three wheels, but this has really got more performance than just a simple limp around on the three wheels. I'm very, very impressed with that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, we lost the spoiler. Uh, it was a fairly mighty wing, but not as mighty as the hill climb cars or the uh, Daytona, so... Eh. Well, it looks like we might be able to make it past our first lap if we can clear these jumps. The issue we're going to have now... Ooh, we've bent one of the rear wheels a little bit. Yeah, the issue we're going to have now is... As I said, as soon as we take damage, now is going to be where we're just going to keep adding and adding and adding to that damage. I don't know how long that front right wheel is going to last. Whether it was just a weak wheel or whether it was just I hit it at the perfectly wrong angle and it snapped off. Either could be possible. Let's not fall down there. Come on, car. Keep it all together. I mean, we're still doing like 50 miles an hour. I should probably be a bit careful, actually, because I don't end up in a hay bale because my car doesn't steer. That would not be a great way to go. Okay, we don't need to go out of first gear. First gear should accelerate us away nicely enough. Oh, it's almost exactly the same problem we had with the... <laughs> almost had exactly the same issue we had with the uh, standard car. We've got further than the standard bolide. Uh, I, I ran a bit wide coming out of the hill, got sideways on the uh, takeoff of the jump, and when it landed, it tore one of the we rear wheels off. That's what caused the problem with the uh, original car. We are now starting to struggle a little bit more with turning. Can we make like a full lap with three wheels? Possibly, actually. I reckon it could do it if we don't. That might snap it off. Come back down to the ground, please. Okay, it's bent. Ah, that's probably why we're struggling now with a bit of steering. We've got quite a lot of positive camber going on, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's not great in terms of, uh, of giving us grip to get around these corners. But we're up towards Radiator Springs for the uh, second time. The radiator is still uh, all in one piece. Did not really looked threatened, and that's the advantage of having certainly all the engine at the back. I don't know if there is a radiator. I mean, I would imagine there would be a radiator at the front of this, because that's where the air's coming in to... Uh, 
Oh, to, the, to the, the car, yeah, the engine can be wherever it wants, but they're still going to be the front of the car that's hitting it first. So, obviously, the bodywork is, is plenty tough enough around that uh, section. The car is pulling now quite badly uh, just around in general, mostly to the left. In fact, I don't have to do a huge amount of... <laughs> I don't have to do a huge amount of steering input through that corner. Uh, however, the car doesn't actually turn very well to the left when I do need to put some steering input in. Oh, no, 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 land. I need you to land on the front left corner, okay? I don't really care if you can hit every landing with that front left corner. We've lapped our wheel! <laughs> Just every, every landing hit that front left corner and I'm fine because that front left corner now can't get any worse. Like, there's nothing more that that front left can do that uh, that can give me any problems. It's the rear of the car that uh, can now cause issues, along with that front right. We've got big oversteer going on. Oh, we're fine. We can get it turned around eventually. A little bit of handbrake needed. Still going, though. Can we make it on to... Oh, yeah, we can. We can get across there. Can we make it on to our third lap with just three wheels? That was the front bumper, I think, coming off in its entirety. We lost our rally lights. Yep, the rally lights are gone. I think they came off with the, uh, <laughs> with the front bumper. We've only got three more jumps and two more corners to go. And then we will have made it on to its third lap. This might be the most impressive... As I said, the most impressive drive on three wheels. I certainly think this has made it further than everything else. I know some cars have crawled their way around. Oh, that got the... Really? That got the radiator. Still, I mean, it's been a mighty fine performance from the uh, the car's uh, sort of mechanical strength, engine strength, radiator strength to have made it onto its third lap before the radiator gave up the wheel to uh, carry on. Don't know how quickly this car will overheat. That is... Uh, I was kind of half expecting it to uh, die before we got to that, uh, to that point. Uh, unfortunately, the way I'm driving it, I am tending to rev it quite high to try and get some uh, some speed out of the car because we are now quite broken. Oh, first gear is really the way to go. It will give us enough speed to get over the jumps. We put it in second. We've just not got the speed. Oh, we've not got the really got the turning either to uh, make it up there. Come on, car! Come on, car! If we could make it onto a fourth lap with the Bowline Rally car, I'd be really happy. Uh, <laughs> I'd be very happy indeed. I doubt we can go further than the pigeon somehow. Maybe if the radiator hadn't gone, we might have been able to. Oh, we're going to clonk around on that front. I'm amazed that that front right wheel is still hanging on there. The, the, considering the relatively minor impact that we did with the front left to kill it. Oh, hey, <laughs> we're fine. Nothing bad happened. I don't think anything actually broke any more than it was already. Oh, not fine, not fine, not fine. Not fine at all. There goes the front right wheel. It's upside down across radiator springs. I needed to accelerate because I needed to try and get across the ramp because we'd had a bad sort of approach to it. And yeah, rear wheel drive and missing a front wheel means that uh, when you're trying to do that, it's not always the easiest of things. And yeah, yeah. There. <laughs> Twisted it and it was a godder. However, onto its third lap is not bad going whatsoever. Yeah, if you hit them wrong, the front wheels are not particularly not particularly strong at all. However, having lost a wheel, it then proceeded to uh, last a hell of a long time. The rear wheels seem to bend rather than just sort of ping straight off. And you can see what we've got going on at the back there. But uh, yeah, a mighty fine, a mighty fine showing for the uh, supercar rally vehicle. Up next, we have got a Grand Marshal. However, this one is kind of a luxury spec of the vehicle. It does have a decent, powerful V8, supercharged and everything, but the rest of the car is sort of designed for comfort and so on. Unlike the other two Grand Marshals that have gone around, one being a police car that, you know, designed for pursuits and so on, and the other one was a sports vehicle towing a caravan. So how does the luxury barge fare on the Baja Rama course? Not sure. Suspension does look quite wobblematic. Not the worst we've seen, but does look quite wobbly. Uh, also, very, very oversteer. Oh, it's got a terrible gearbox as well, which is never fun with the uh, <laughs> with the automatic. We've just got to deal with it though. That's part of the uh, part of the car. Uh, yeah, we are going to be very, very sideways. I think through some of these corners. Oh, and then we're going to get some understeer. Come on, Grand Marshal. No, stop, stop going sideways, please. And then just about struggle your way up a hill. It's fine. Uh, survivability-wise, 
I'm expecting good things from, from the Grand Marshal. Hell, the car one tow in the caravan made it on to three laps. So I would expect this to be challenging that potentially. I don't think it will quite go as far as... I'm not expecting it to go as far as the police variant. That was uh, a mighty tough benchmark for cars to beat full stop. So, yeah, I'm thinking this heavier version, while it does have some power, this heavier version, probably going to be more susceptible to damage. There's just sort of more momentum going into the, the impacts. I mean, admittedly, the police version wasn't exactly a stripped-out lightened race car, but, uh, yeah, there's probably going to take a bit more damage in the impacts. And, well, you never know what the Baja jumps are going to do to uh, some of these vehicles. The suspension is uh, already having... Oh, problems we made it across radiator springs we go and skidding along on our roof skidding along on the roof is fine not too worried about that however the uh, the impact on uh, on radiator springs not great however didn't damage anything important and tip the car back over front left isn't looking great the front left suspension isn't looking particularly brilliant in fact neither of the front suspensions are looking uh, looking that good i can deal with that as a uh, conclusion to Radiator Springs for the first time. Skid it along the road on your roof. While it does, you know, it looks like it does a lot of damage to the car. It does a lot of visual damage to the car, sort of roof line and so on. That's not affecting my drivability. You know, I, I would much rather have it skidding along on its roof than uh, smacking into the ground hard with all the suspension and so on, risking being broken. The radiator is still in one piece, which is always nice. I don't think we're going to have the grip to get across all oh, this uh, mo oh, we might have the power in this car but we do not have the grip the traction to be able to use that power to get nicely across this uh, this first motocross section it is nasty it's very nasty in fact uh, <laughs> it's just smack the front bounce around on the rear and then repeat that process all the way down but the front is still holding up for now and I say for now I'm sure it's gonna it will die at some point uh, will we have the speed to make it? No, we don't even have the speed to make it across there. Oh, and come back down. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was nasty. That was really nasty. As I said, skidding along the roof is fine. However, as we were skidding along, when we hit the crest of the next jump, that not so much fine. Now, I don't really want the car twisting around in the air upside down. That's a... Uh, that's a recipe for disaster. Again, it's damage to the engine, damage to important bits of the front of the car that's the fear and all of that. Don't care about the roof, but uh, yeah. The, thankfully, no important parts of the front of the Grand Marshal were harmed on the opening lap, really. I mean, it's been spectacular. It's flailed a lot. We've got three of the four doors on the go. Now we just need the bonnets, the boot, uh, front and rear bumper, and then we will have the uh, complete... Complete flappy car. I don't think we've had everything flapping at once on a vehicle before. Um, so, yeah, that could be a new challenge within a challenge. It might happen. Uh, this car, please change gear, you stupid... Oh, it's a terrible gearbox. It really is a terrible gearbox. Uh, there's a fair bit of understeer going on through there. Uh, mechanically speaking, this is actually in very, very good condition. We're almost driving... Almost driving perfectly straight, I think. We haven't really done any damage to the front of the car. In fact, uh, it's a little bit pulling to the left, but only a tiny, tiny fraction. That is good news in terms of, yes, yeah, survivability around here. Uh, we've kind of... With a combination of this terrible gearbox and the lack of traction we have going on, we're going quick enough to clear the jumps and not so quick as to smack the car really hard on the landing of them all the time. It's one of the difficulties with the, uh, with the rally cars. So, yeah, I mean, we're on our second lap, radiator's still on the go, survivability is looking good, I fear, I fear radiator spray, I fear the gearbox, good god, this is a hellish gearbox, uh, radiator springs might give this car some grief now, as we are, we've got to be perfect to get across it cleanly, if we don't make it all the way across, if we clip the landing zone with the front of the car, uh, it's going to be a lot of damage done to uh, to my Grand Marshal. Uh, we, if we clip the underside, that's fine, but it's... Oh, it's just made it again. Oh, it's, it lives. It lives for now. It lives for now, but I, I think that's kind of the worst of this second lap done. I'm not sure I mean, if that jump isn't going to kill it. The motocross jumps will probably do a bit more damage. It's how much damage it takes to slow it down to the point where it can't make radiator springs nicely. Oh, we decided to change gear at a terrible point there, gearbox. Thank you for that one. 
again though, no real harm done to it. You can see the damage to the front wheels. Uh, they've kind of evened themselves out in terms of camber and tow, etc, which is probably why uh, I'm not having too many problems with the steering. Uh, we'll tip that back over. Although well, has that made the front any worse? No, it hasn't really. It hasn't really made any, any real difference to our steering. We're again going for a uh, chopped top spec, I think. We probably will by the time we are finished anyway. And now begins the bat of the front of the car across the motor, across section. Yeah, we're just going to, again, <laughs> nothing you can really do about it. Just got to go for it and uh, hope the car is strong enough. The radiator's doing a hell of a job here. The radiator is because, I mean, this is hitting the front of the car time after time across those sections. We're actually bending the front of the chassis upwards. Not a good sign. We could end up having the car beached rare, but it has happened on this series. And, oh, didn't quite get as big of a crunch this time down. Uh, are we able to... Come on, come on. Wiggle the car over. That's the ticket. Got to be a little bit careful that I don't end up snapping wheels or blowing tyres doing that. But, uh... We've got to get the car back onto its uh, onto its wheels somehow. Oh, that's a horrible crunch. I mean, the front suspension is gone, and the, the, uh, the front of the chassis is getting more and more buckled uh, downwards. We can see how low the front uh, the front right is the worst of the two wheels, or the front or the worst looking of the two wheels. The front left isn't exactly great either. Still quick enough though to clear that jump. Oh, that's not helpful. That's not helpful at all. We lost the wing mirror. That's a nasty crash there. Um, Engine starved of oil. Oh, that's how we've got the car over nice and quickly. What's going on? That was a painful, painful crash for the uh, for the Grand Marshal. That front right is now looking like it's going to start causing trouble. Uh, I don't quite know how how that jump gave us so many issues there with the. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of as we left it. I don't know whether we caught the back on something or just the way that the way that I positioned myself, the way the jump is. As we left the ramp, though, it just flicked the nose of the car down straight into the ground. We do that on radiator springs, and I'm not sure we're getting out the other side. Admittedly, admittedly, that was a nasty, nasty crunch, and the car is still perfectly okay. Again, no wheel axle damage, no radiator damage. Amazingly, the lux luxury barge is uh, fending off from the radiator damage in spectacular fashion. As I say that, we, uh, <laughs> we lose it across a small jump. Of course we do. Um, however, to have made it onto the third lap with no radiator damage is very good going. I could do without doing that, though. I really could do without uh, without doing that one. Come on, over we go. That's the ticket. Or oh, don't get yourself beached going up this hill. We've only ever had one car break in such a way that it stopped being able to climb the hills. That was a Legrand that ended up as one-wheel drive. Not going to be a problem that I foresee having with this car. It would be an amusing way to uh, to go out, an annoying one at, uh, at that. Come on then, Grand Marshal. Oh, okay, we've got problems. We have got problems. I think we might struggle to get up the speed to make Radiator Springs. And if that's the case, we're going to have a very, very big crash uh, when it comes... Uh, how it... I don't know how sometimes I'm picking this up, but it's just immediately... Uh, immediately having the force. It obviously, oh, you can see how heavy the car is because I'm having issues trying to pull the damn thing over again. There we go. We'll turn up the node grabber. I don't want to get the node grabber too high because I don't want to pick up a car and fling it miles across the track and wreck it. That is a lot of damage at the front. <laughs> that is a lot of damage to the front right. Oh, that's not going to help matters. That landed right on that corner. It's still going amazingly. We've lost the bumper. Come on, Grand Marshal. Make it, make it, make it. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. We've lost a front wheel. I knew the damage was going to start coming to bite us. And, whoa. <laughs> that's why I didn't want to put the node grabber up too high. Because sometimes... I don't know why it is. Sometimes this car is really difficult to roll over. Sometimes not so much. Okay, so we've lost the front left wheel. Is now no longer steering. Uh, we can turn right relatively well. Hmm. I, I want that wheel to fall off rather than what it's doing at the moment. If the wheel doesn't fall off, we may have issues getting around a corner somewhere. Uh, because when the wheel's gone off, yes, we have the extra drag from the uh, car just... Oh, that's heavy on that corner, but the wheel's still attached. If the wheel falls off, well, yeah, I've got the extra friction of having that, you know, the, the, the wheel... Oh, no, 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 come on. Use the banking. Use the banking to your advantage, Grand Marshal. That's the one. Uh, yeah, 
I can't, I can't turn that anymore. It's going to... I think that's gone. Unless I can somehow recover. I can't. It's off the course. Steering got it in the end. We uh, survived a long time without a wheel in the Bolide Rally car, but the Grand Marshal, not so much. I am going to just pull it back onto the uh, map a little bit here. Come on. Come on, car. Here we go. Uh, yeah, one big hit. I did think it was getting more and more damaged, and as it takes more and more of that uh, of that damage, it gets more and more difficult to clear the jumps, and inevitably something would give. Something would give in the Grand Marshal. It did very well up until that point, and that is a hell of a tough radiator in this car to have survived as long as it did. But once we lost that wheel, uh, or once we lost the use of the steering, the problem was it didn't fall off completely. If it fell off completely, we could probably have made it work. But uh, with it trying to drag the car in random directions, we didn't have the handling to kind of fight and compete against it, and everything was so broken that, uh, yep, yeah, the steering would be the death of the uh, of the Grand Marshal. Still, though, to make it onto its third lap, but as far as it did, not a bad showing for the big luxury vehicle. I think it's actually about a very similar place it went out as the sport version that was towing the caravan, interestingly. And for our final vehicle today, I have got the modern Pazima. Now, two of these have gone around this course, a stanced one and a normal spec one. Both of them have died at exactly the same place, with exactly the same fault, the engine uh, being knocked out, uh, before completing their first lap. So I am hoping that uh, this sort of sports version of the car might fare a little bit better. It is still front-wheel drive, however it has the engine from the 200BX, so a completely different engine in this car. Fairly powerful, as you can see here, we've got a turbocharger uh, going on here. Uh, I am hoping it might make it off the opening lap, really. That's the uh, <laughs> that's the goal here. Can we get a Pazima, the, the modern Pazima, the classic Pazimas have done very well, uh, traditionally, around this circuit. Can we get the modern Pazima to make it further than a lap? A uh, fair bit of uh, wheel spin. Oh, that's not what we want the car to be doing. <laughs> That was an impressive nosedive. Well done, vehicle. That was uh, mighty impressive, in fact. Oh, we've got to be really careful with our uh, gears. We can't have... Third gear doesn't work, really. Uh, there's a lot of wheel spin going on in this car. The tyres aren't really up to the... Well, the tyres and, and the vehicle in general aren't really up to dealing with all of this power. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of trying to be a little bit careful. Because if we go up into third, all of the turbo lag, and there's just no go in it at all. Uh, we've got a little bit of camber going on with one of those front wheels now, early on. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem we're having. I was just trying to figure out what the engine was doing. Um, when we're in second gear here, I, I need to stop getting wheel spin. Come on! Oh, okay, we made it. We've made it across radiator springs. We have lost the radiator. This car is likely to overheat relatively quickly. Oh, yeah, the wheel spin is a real problem in this car. Uh, the wheel spin combined with the turbo just don't help. I can't go into a high gear because we're just losing all of the power. Come on, find some find some go. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's what we like, some actual speed in this, uh, in this car. Across the first jump, next section. Nicely does it. Okay, on to the motocross section. This is where we start to fear for the, uh, the engine. I guess the engine placement in this car might make it susceptible uh, to... It's, it's not so much hitting the front on the crest of the jump that we've got to worry about. It's if we hit the underside of the car, the underside at the front. That is what can take out the engine on this, or has taken out the engine previously. Whether it will on this, I don't know, basically. Make it across here. I mean, it's nasty impacts. And as ever with a front-wheel drive car, everything focused at the front of the vehicle. Uh, we lose one of the front wheels, or one of the front wheel axles even. Oh, there was a momentary pause because I wasn't sure if that was going to be the uh, death of the car there. Uh, then it's likely to come to a grinding halt. We can kind of... Anything can happen to the rear of the car and it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the overall uh, drivability of it. However, uh, it, all of the impacts tend to go on the front. It's it's rare that you do significant damage to the rear, certainly without doing significant to the damage to the front as well. That is the jump, though, was it this one? I can't remember. One of those back jumps, I think it was the first one. The landing of the first jump is what's killed the engine on both the previous cars. We have made it 
further. We have made it further than, than the other Pizimas. Let's just get it onto a second lap. That was my goal with this car. Make it onto its second lap. And that is the goal completed. We did it. It's not going to go on to set a record. It's already getting a bit warm. Uh, with the radiator gone so so early and a you know high powered turbo engine, it's it's going to overheat relatively fast. But it made it onto its second lap, which is something. And then how far can we go around this second lap, or will we kill the engine? <laughs> will we kill the engine, lose a wheel, or something else? Yeah, it's it's overheating so quickly with this uh, with this engine. Oh, no, I don't want, I don't want that gear. Oh, I actually kind of helped us out in some ways. And the problem is. Again, with the turbo lag that we're having, I can't run it in higher gears. It's going to even it's going to work the engine more. It's going to overheat the car more. It's just not it's not particularly great, but it might mean that we survive onto our second lap. Can we get past Radiator Springs for a second time? That might be asking a little bit much of the car. That might be asking quite a lot of the vehicle as we come up towards the next jump. I'm not, I'm not able to get the speed up. Oh, nice roll. Nice roll indeed. Oh, we've got rear wheel damage. <laughs> we've got the the, uh, the rear right's gone. It's twisting inwards. Uh, we don't really handle anymore. That might give us some problems now because Radiator Springs was an only just when the car was in fairly good condition. This is probably... Come on, not going to work. Oh, we've just got the speed. We've just got the acceleration to make it across there. I'll take that. Uh, we've got coolant and oil overheating. However, we actually haven't had any any of the internal parts go yet. We haven't had piston rings, head gasket, any of that stuff as of yet break. Oh, there we go. Just as I, as I say that, piston rings have gone. Uh, we are going to keep going for a little while longer. I doubt we're going to make... Yeah, we're not going to make it down the first motocross section. In fact, if we can make it to the motocross section, we'll probably be uh, doing relatively, relatively well. Oh problem is now it's it's so broken that uh, I can't get up the speed we were struggling with traction to begin with don't know what went on there oh now the engine's gone uh, <laughs> it tumbled it fell over and the engine was on and I was trying to drive I mean you saw the throttle was on and there was nothing now it's now it's dead I think that might have been to do with the internal internal damage and uh, yeah well um, it did better you know we made it just about over halfway around our second lap with the uh, Pazima we didn't kill the engine it was well we, we did kill the engine but it wasn't from crash damage it wasn't the engine like a catastrophic well, it was a catastrophic failure but it wasn't a, an impact on the engine that broke it overheating and uh, kind of tore itself apart the wheels were bent and buckled oh, you can see the condition of the front wheels the rear wheels uh, were bent and buckled and it took a fair few hits did a fair few tumbles we didn't actually lose a wheel so yeah if the engine doesn't die on this car it's a relatively tough bugger but the <laughs> the engine a little bit of the uh, the weak point or oh, in this case uh, the, the radiator gone however Vast improvement for the uh, the Pazima here. So it is on to our leaderboard, and after last week's relatively low scoring round, today we have two cars go towards the top of the table, not quite making it into the top 10. However, the Luxury Grand Marshal would go into 12th place. It is only a fraction further around the road than the Grand Marshal Sport that towed the caravan. Amusingly, both going out in completely different ways. Uh, however, yeah, exactly the same corner, but the Luxury one just went that little bit further down the road. Likewise, very, very close with the Bolide, the Regency, and the Aluda, all failing at Radiator Springs. The Rally Bolide, though, rolling a little bit further down the road on its roof, admittedly. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> losing both the front wheels, not so great on that uh, Rally car. Further down the table, we do find the other uh, Pazima Zen. That's the proper name for that uh, configuration of car. The best of the modern Pazimas. Amusingly, though, not better than a standard classic Pazima. Uh, it went out with uh, wheel axle failure. However, the other uh, Zen's engine problem with such high-powered turbocharged engines when the radiator goes they do tend to overheat very very quickly but it beats the uh, rock bouncer again actually very very close to this one as well with the rock bouncer and the i-series and so on it was a little bit further down the road though than uh, that p 
repairing. That's going to be it, though, for this episode. As ever, I shall link all the mods I've used in the description so you can download them, have a go with them yourself. But thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>